Father, I thank you that you have anointed my husband, Pastor Roger, to pastor this church, to lead your people to victory, God. I thank you, Father, that your, your word is in him and will flow through him. Father, I thank you. Thank you for the anointing you've placed on this man's life and the privilege it is for us to, to be here to receive revelation of your word, God. And I just bless him. And I bless, um, I bless that funnel that you're using to pour into him and through him for us today, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hey, lovey, can you grab me a clean? Oh, wait, never mind. I got one in my pocket. Not that I need to blow my nose or anything, but, you know, sometimes I get a little excited and my nose starts to, I don't know, lose the control. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. We uh, are living in an awesome time. Amen. Praise God. I just want to give you a little bit of warning. I feel like I know what I'm supposed to say today, and I actually feel like it's supposed to be good. Usually when that happens, it's like a lead balloon. So bring your expectations down. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. Just bring them down, bring them down, you know. <laughs> you know what I always say, it's better to live a life without any disappointment. <laughs> Keep your expectations low, people. <laughs> Keep your expectations low and you'll never be disappointed. That's right. Right, Kurt? Never disappointed. Kurt's with me. He said, never be disappointed again. Never be disappointed. Hey, can we turn up the lights or are they already up? I can't tell. It's so bright up here. I just wish I had like spotlights that could shine on you guys. Because <laughs> I love your glory. The glory of the Lord is on you. Praise God. Well, Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Thank you so much for this day, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your purpose. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your indwelling among us, Lord. And right now, I just release your holy angels on assignment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I declare your word will not return void. Thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that is in us and among us today, Lord. I thank you for the wisdom and revelation that's going to come forth from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, but you know what the good thing is? I preach the word, and it never returns void, okay? Amen. So I could literally be a bag of potatoes, and if I can preach the word, you're still getting something, amen. okay? So I'll just stick to the game plan, okay? It's right here. It's the Bible, and we're just going to boom, boom, boom right, right through this thing, man. I have so many scriptures that we would be having like dinner here, like supper time. But so we're going we're gonna to not go through all of them. Kurt, I, I got some up there. We'll go through all those so you don't have to get mad at me. I promise you we'll go through all the, all the ones that you took the time to enter in. Praise God. Um, <clears throat> there's really, there's two questions in life that you have to answer to have a, to have a successful, meaningful life. Really, to to have a to have any success or meaning in your life, and 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 the reality is like people have already you answered these questions to some degree or another, whether you've known that you've answered them or whether you haven't answered them consciously. Everyone answers them, <clears throat> and eventually, everybody's answer is going to be the same. At least on the first one. Now, the first question is. Who is Jesus? Okay? That's the first question everybody needs to answer. Who is Jesus? Okay? To you. Okay? Not in the general sense, but who is Jesus to you? Second question is, who are you? Okay? And if you don't have the answer to the first one down, you're never going to be sure of the second one. And if you don't know who you are, you're never going to know what you're here to do. And you are going to bumble and stumble through life, hoping for the best, and sometimes, you know, sometimes getting it and sometimes not, but you're, you're never going to be satisfied and you're always going to be confused. So, you, you know, we're, we're going to spend some time on these questions today because when we, when we look at people, we just look around, you know, look around, and you can look inside the church, you can look outside the church. There's a lot of confusion right now. 
and there, there always has been, <laughs> but I think it's becoming more apparent. Um, we got to know who we are, but to know who we are, we have to really personally know who Jesus is. You know, one of, again, they're all my favorites, but one of my favorite scriptures, especially this morning, uh, and it, it might actually be one of the most sarcastic verses in the entire Bible, <laughs> which actually do, it is one of my favorites. Um, Paul's got some great ones too, but James, man, he doesn't disappoint. <clears throat> James 2.19 you believe there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Wow. Okay? I know a lot of people that say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. Okay, good for you. I'm not, and again, I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm not trying to be mean or right. not. not <laughs> you know, everybody knows I'm happy. I'm always smiling on the inside. Um, but, but there's a lot of people that say, oh, I believe in God. Oh, I, Jesus is the son of God. The demons know. Jesus is the son of God. The demons know. Okay? It, who is Jesus to you? Is saying he's the son of God or saying you believe in God. You got to know who Jesus is if you want to know who you are. If you don't know, and there's a lot of believers, you know, there's, there's the saving knowledge. You can have saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But Jesus didn't die and stay in the tomb. We, we have to understand. He did, not, he did not die and stay in the tomb. If he would have died, and you know, we can talk about this some other time if you want to have a dialogue about it, but I'm just going to tell you what I believe. If Jesus would have died and stayed in the tomb, your sins would have been forgiven. You could die and go to heaven. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. He died, he forgave your sins, and he resurrected to new life. He rose again to new life. He conquered sin and death. Okay? His, he, he, he doesn't want you to get born again so you can die and then go to heaven. He got you born again. In his Colossians chapter 3, he says, you, over, you have already died. When, you, when, when, when Jesus went into that tomb and, and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you go into the tomb with him. And when he came out of that tomb, you come out with him. You are resurrected to a new life right here, right now. You have a resurrected Lord and Savior in you. And, and, and when we acknowledge who Jesus is, you know, and I'll tell you, you know, I, I love this in song set this morning. It was perfect, man. It was perfect. Thank you so much. Jesus, he is my Lord. He is my Savior. And he is my King. Okay. Those are three things that Jesus is to me. He's my Lord, he's my Savior, and he's my King. And when we, when, when we can acknowledge those things, like I can say Jesus is the Son of God. Demons say that too. The demons acknowledge, oh, Jesus is the Son of God. No, but is he your Lord? That's okay. right. is, is, is he your Savior? Because the thing with the thing with what Jesus has done, in, it says he, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he, gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Okay, first part of that verse, God so loved the world, the general sense. Jesus has forgiven the sins, of, not just our sins, but the sins of the entire world. But what's the next part? Whosoever believes in him, you got to put your faith in him as your savior. Okay, when we, when we put our faith in what Jesus has already done, we receive his grace. Okay, the grace that was poured out on the cross, the blood of Jesus poured out on the cross, the grace to live a resurrected life. Because that's what, that's what we get to do now, is we get to live a resurrected life right here, right now. We, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people in the church, there are a lot of Christians, you might, you know, maybe you're born again, you know, you know watching online, and you're like, well... You know, I don't get to go to heaven till I die. Well, praise God, you're already dead. That's right. Colossians chapter 3, you're already dead. The key, you, the, your old man is already dead. Your new nature is born again. You are in heavenly places. This is a message that is so, so prevalent in the gospel. You are seated in heavenly places. So I'm going to share some scriptures with you this morning that I believe are just really going to shed some light on this. 
and help us come to terms with who Jesus is. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses, for starting in verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not, uh, not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, not by works that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good, work, good works, which God prepared in, a, in advance for us to do. Okay, so now, Jesus went to the cross for the whole world, but he went to the cross for you. He shed his blood for you, for your salvation. So you could be forgiven, okay? Hmm. You know, praise God. It's super important for us to acknowledge this. <clears throat> and I'm, <laughs> you know, praise God. I'm, again, I love y'all. Jesus, when he went to the cross, he suffered. He suffered in our place. The Father, some of you have been taught this, but let's just be super clear here, okay? Hebrews 1, uh, chapters, well, verses 1, 1 through 3 talks about Jesus is the exact radiance of the Father's glory, the exact representation of his being. Uh, he sustains all things by the power of his word, and the world was created through him. <sighs> Jesus was quick to forgive, quick, 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 yeah. quick, quick, quick. He forgave, forgave, forgave. We're supposed to love one another uh, like Christ loved us. How did he love us? Well, he forgave us while we were yet sinners, okay? Right. Like you were forgiven be while you were yet sinners. In fact, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 talks about us being uh, forgiven before time eternal. Yeah. But that grace was made apparent in Christ Jesus with the appearance of that. So when God created Adam and Eve, when, when, when the... When the when, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost got together and said, hey, you know what? Let's create them in our image. You know, and we see this in, in Genesis. And let's create them in our image and likeness. Let's, let's create a male and female. They already saw the end from the beginning. They already knew. In, in Scripture, very clear, Revelation, Jesus was a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world were even laid. Ephesians 1, 1, 1 3. Uh, or, um, yeah, Ephesians 1, 3. Um, he chose you and him before the very foundations, okay? Before they created the world, Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Jesus wasn't plan B, okay? In their knowledge, they foresaw the end from the beginning. They knew what they were going to have to do to get you back into, into that love relationship with them. And they said, yeah, let's do it, okay? Jesus said, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because they loved you so much before they even created you. Okay? That's how much they loved you. They loved you so much that they were, Jesus was willing to die for you, die for you because he couldn't live without you. If he could have lived without you, he wouldn't have created you to begin with. Okay? You've got to understand this, how much God's love is for you. You've got to understand how much God loves us. Okay? It, it just, I say understand it, but it's like it's, it's that... We need to experience it to understand it. Yes, okay, you, yes. you got to experience it. You can't. Yes. Hearing about it is not enough. Okay, so Jesus is a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. He's up on the cross. He's taking the consequence. He's taking, he's taking, uh, some, and sometimes we use these words, we say like judgment, judgment, judgment. Yes, there's judgment going on. Yes, there's wrath going on. But who's pouring out the wrath? Was it, was it God so mad at you that he needed to beat up your older brother? Okay, I know some of this is taught, this, this uh, uh, um, I'm not even going to try to say it. <laughs> Substitutionary punishment, we'll just talk about it. Substitutionary punishment, uh, that Jesus was the substitute. God was so mad at sin that he wanted to pound the crap out of you. But Jesus said, no, daddy, I'll take the beating instead. No, no, no. No. It, proves, it, it pleased the father 
to see Jesus on the cross because Jesus wanted to be on the cross. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down for you, okay? So now we need to understand that, we, that Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. So when you look at Jesus, you need to see the Father. And if you're looking at Jesus and you're looking over here, oh, God's a little bit different. He's got a little bit of a sharp edge to him. Whatever edge he's got, the same edge Jesus has. If you've got two different things, then Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 doesn't mean anything. And so many other scriptures that talk about Jesus being the, the exact representation, the exact likeness. Okay? That's Jesus. He, is, he, was, he was the creator of the universe coming down in his own creation to redeem it back to himself. Okay? So when you make him your, when you say he is my savior... You're putting your faith in what he did for you, acknowledging that it's by faith, by, it's, it's through faith by grace. Through faith, I think I just read that scripture. Did we just read that scripture? I meant to read that scripture. It's through faith by grace. God's grace poured out before the foundations manifested in Christ on the cross. Okay? Through faith. You reaching up, faith doesn't make anything faith only takes what grace provides okay if god's grace isn't providing it your faith isn't going to take it it's god's grace the abundance of god's grace in christ jesus your faith reaches and grasps hold of that salvation jesus jesus already forgave your sins the day you received your salvation said you know what scripture is super clear it says believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and that the father has raised him from the dead in man, you're going to be saved. Wow. Okay, you're going to be saved. Believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and the Father has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. You're going to be born again. Wow, you're born again. Okay, that's not the day Jesus went to the cross. You're putting your faith into something that he's already done because his grace is abundant. His grace is there for you. So when you acknowledge that Jesus is your, is, is your Savior, he is your Lord. Well, what does Lord mean? Lord means that he's your, like, like, man, he's my Lord. He's my king. There's no one higher than Jesus. No one higher than Jesus. He only, there's, Jesus can only be. There is only one Lord and there is only one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And get this, get this. When you make him your Lord and you make him your Savior and you make him your king, guess what? He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Well, what does that mean? Like the king of England? The king of Denmark? I think Denmark's got a king still, doesn't it? The king of Canada? Justin Trudeau, he's not king yet. Um, it's, not just, it's not just kings. He's made you kings and priests. Okay? When you can acknowledge who Jesus is and who he is to you and you you acknowledge what the word says about him, well, now you've answered the first question. Who's Jesus? He's your Lord and Savior. He's your king. Well, who does that make you? Well, according to scripture, that makes you a king and a priest. According to scripture, that makes you a child of God. Yes. According to scripture, that makes you a victorious one. Yes. According to scripture, that makes you redeemed. That makes you holy. That makes you the righteousness of Christ. Who are you all? Yep. Just the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's me. Yep. I'll confess it. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm just the righteousness of God. Yep. <laughs> Who are you? The same thing, okay? Who are you? You're victorious. That's who you are. What does Philippians 4.13 say? It says that you can do all things. What does that make you? That makes you an overcomer. That makes you victorious no matter what you face. But listen, but, but but I'm, I'm really super duper serious here. Like, you have to know the answer to the first question. You have to know. That Jesus is Lord. Jesus is your Savior. Jesus is your Lord. And that he is supreme. There is no other. Okay? He is the only way to the Father. It's through Jesus Christ the Son. He is supreme over all of creation. 
okay? Okay, and he, he transferred you from the kingdom of darkness and he, and he brought you into the kingdom like Colossians 1.13. And now Jesus, is, he's, the, he, he's the firstborn. He's the supreme over all things created. There is no one higher than Jesus. Okay, God, that's who God made him. God made him Lord and King. So now when you submit yourself to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you know who your Savior is, that makes you righteous. You are the righteousness of Christ. Jesus became sin so that you could become righteous. Jesus became unholy so that you could become holy. That's what he was doing on that cross. He was taking it from you and he was putting it on himself so that he could get, take all that sin, all that, all that guilt, all that shame, all that, all that sickness, all that disease, all that poverty, all the things that he came, all the things that Christ never intended for us to deal with here. God, God created this world perfect. He created Adam and Eve perfect. And now he took it on the cross and he redeemed the whole thing, okay? So when you acknowledge that's who he is, then you get to participate in what he did, okay? You get to, wow, I got to get that first question right. Then, then when I know who the first, God, Jesus is king, he is Lord, and he is my savior, there is nothing more supreme than Christ, okay? Now I know, okay, that's who I serve. That's who I serve. Hmm, okay. Now he's given me his word. James 1.22, James 1.23, James 1.24, it tells me his word is my spiritual mirror. When I look into his word, I get to see who I am. Okay, man, this is, when I really believe that about Jesus, I really get to experience what his word says about me. And it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's, it, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I, I've been praying, and you know, it's a good thing. Pastors pray every now and then. Um, sometimes I read my Bible when I get really desperate. Um, I've been, <laughs> you know, and I've been meditating on some things, and I'm like, Lord, again, I'm not trying to bag anybody. I'm not ripping on anybody, but I'm like, Lord, where, where are the pastors right now? Like, where are they? Like, where are the mighty men of valor? Where is the courage? And he told me back in, <laughs> he answered this question before, back in the spring. And again, I keep asking the same one, because oh, just tell me again. Um, well, he told me, I, I, swear, I swear to Jesus, Lord and Savior, my King, King. I was looking for a hero. You know, Jesus is my King and he's my Lord, but I'm like, Lord, I need, I need somebody here right now, you know. And he said, you need to be the hero you're looking for. Wow. Mm. And I said, wow. That's not what I was wanting to hear. <laughs> Either you're looking, is I put it in you already. I yeah. poured my spirit into you. Yeah. You're looking for a mighty man of valor. Go look in the mirror. Go look in the word. Go look in the word. This is going to tell you this is who you are. This is who you are. He has made us in his image and in his likeness. And so this week, I'm like, Lord, where are the pastors? Like, where are the, you know, I got to meet Greg Locke you know, on, on Monday, and that was awesome, man. That guy is, thank you so much. I really got, got you Facebook pictures and everything, man. And, uh, I mean, I got to meet him, have a conversation with him, talk to him, be encouraged. And, um, and it's like, man, I want, I want more of these guys. I want more of these guys standing up. And I said, Lord, where, where are they? And he said, they just don't know who, they just don't know who they are yet. That's right. They're, they, they're just uncertain of their identity because they're uncertain of my identity in them. Wow. And I thought, wow. wow. Man, this is the same thing. And it's, it's, it's just like a basic truth for all believers. Like if we don't have a firm understanding of who Christ is, yeah. like he literally, he is supreme over all things. He literally conquered sin and death. He, li he did this for me. So what does that mean? That means the, 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 the law of the Spirit has set me free from the law of sin and death. Like, I'm free from that. Like, I'm free from that. Jesus doesn't give me a spirit of fear, but he gives me a spirit of power and of love and self-control. I don't need anybody to control me. I can control myself. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's what God, that's how God created me to be. Okay? I, I'm not in fear. I'm in power. Okay, and, and, and this, the, the gospel is not a matter of words, but it's a demonstration of that power in me to, to live a life of power, to live a life of victory, to live a life of overcoming. But if I don't acknowledge who he is, 
I'll never really, I can pretend, oh yeah, I'm a victorious believer. But if I don't really, if I don't really acknowledge who Jesus is in me, not just for me, but in me, I'm not looking in the mirror correctly. Because I will never identify the way I need to identify with him. Wow. Okay. This is a verse from the Bible I'm going to share with you. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. This verse. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Okay, again, this verse is saying you are looking into a mirror and you're seeing the glory of the Lord. You're looking into a mirror and the reflection of yourself is revealing the glory of the Lord because you are being transformed. We are being transformed into the image, the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You and I are being by the Spirit of the Lord, and in Romans 12, 2 makes this abundantly clear, by the renewing of our mind, okay? Because we are, we are men and women who don't just hear the word and forget what it says. We hear the word, and then you're not going to say, oh, Pastor Roger said that, so it must be true, because he's the guy in the front who forgot to put on his suit coat today. He looked a little less pastoral than normal, so I'm not sure if I should believe him, but he did have a microphone, so that's really good, okay? No. You're going to hear the word, and then you're going to take it home, and you're going to say, oh, I don't know. if I've never heard that like, presented like that before. And you're going to read it again for yourself. You're going to read your Bible. <laughs> you're going to, you might even pray and meditate over it, and you're going to say, wow, he was really screwed up. Thank you for confirming that, Lord. Or <laughs> you're going to say, wow, Jesus, thank you for revealing that truth to me. But you're not just going to believe it because I said it. Right. Okay, because you're going to, like Paul told Timothy, you're going to rightly divide the word of truth. If you can rightly divide the word of truth, that means you can wrongly divide the word of truth too, okay? Okay, you have a responsibility to renew your mind. I cannot renew your mind for you. But when you do renew your mind, you're going to be transformed. Okay, you're no longer going to be conformed to this world, but you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What are you going to be transformed to? Like Romans 12, 2 says, you're going to be transformed into the image of the Lord. You're going to be, you're going to, you, you are meant to look just like Jesus, you are meant to reflect his glory. So when people see you, they say, whoa. Something's different about that person. Yeah. Something's different about that person. Something's different. I don't know what it is. But you know what? People were attracted to Jesus. Yes, they were. Yeah. You know what else? Jesus demonstrated the power of God in his life. Yeah. You know, Jesus was as bold as a lion. Jesus was as bold as a lion. He wasn't some little, you know, I'm going to mousy little preacher. <laughs> you know? How many times in Scripture does it say he stood up and he cried out in a loud voice? That's right. And he's in the middle of town. Man, Jesus was courageous. Jesus was, he was confident in who he was. So now, 1 John four seventeen. <laughs> Praise God. Love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. All right, I want you to know that, that that's not a capital D, capital J. I mean, your translation might have it, but mine doesn't, so mine's right. Yours is screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> Most translations don't capitalize that as the day of judgment, like it's one specific day. The day of judgment is when, when you're standing, okay? When, when, when you got to stand, that's the day of judgment. Like, I, I got to stand. You know, I got to take a stand for something. I got to take a stand for righteousness. I got to take a stand for truth. I got to take a stand for liberty. I got to take a stand for Jesus. You're taking a stand. It says that you may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are you wow. <laughs> in this world. Right. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. 
But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Wow. Man, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So now, who's Jesus? Who are you? Who are you? In, you know, I'm preaching to myself. And you just happen to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us online. <laughs> Actually, I'm preaching to my wife. Just, I just try not to look at her the whole time. <laughs> She's used to it, though. Oh. But we, we, you just gotta, you got you to be able to answer those questions. Who is Jesus and who are you? I would say if you have fear or trepidation, and, and I'm not talking about like a holy admiration of the Lord. You're not talking about the fear of the Lord, but the holy admiration. I'm talking about like you're fearful. You're, you're in torment. God's perfect love has not been perfected in you. you know, And, and I think that's, maybe we can say that to be true for all of us at certain times. But let that be an indicator for you. Like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling dread. I'm feeling uncertainty. Okay, what do I got to do? Okay, who's Jesus? Who's Jesus? Okay, ask yourself these questions. Who's Jesus? Yeah, you see, did he conquer that? Yeah, I think he did. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, I'm, uh, what does the word say? Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he conquered sin and death. Is that included in that package? Yeah, it is. What does scripture say? It says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Wow, what did Jesus say in Matthew 11, 28, 29? He says, hey, uh, take my yoke, take my yoke, take my yoke and learn from me. I got a light burden. I got an easy yoke. Okay. What is, what is it? So if, if, you're, if you're weary and heavy laden, I'm, uh, I got to make an exchange here. I got to cast this on Jesus. I got fear. What do you do? Who's Jesus? Yeah, he's my Lord and Savior. Yeah, he's my king. What does that make me? Who are you? Exactly. Who are you? Who are you? Are you, are you, his, are you, are you redeemed? Yeah. Have, has he made you holy? According to the word, he has. Has he perfected you? Yep. In your spirit, he has. Yep. Are you victorious? According to the word, you are. That's right. are, are, are. Can you do all things in Christ Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I can. No, that's <laughs> According to the word, you can. That's right. So what do we need to do? We need to know who Jesus is. And we need to know who we are. How, how do you know? You know when you meditate. You know when you say faith comes through hearing and hearing comes through the word of God. You, we, we, if, if there's fear, if there's doubt, you know, I can lay hands on you and pray for you and I would be happy to do that. Praise God. And, and sometimes that's really, you need that breakthrough in that moment because it could be, you know, that's what the word says. Lay hands on a sick and they will recover. And uh, sometimes fear is a sickness, okay? <laughs> fear can cause a lot of sickness too, by the way. But then you, you have to take that personal responsibility to get into the word, meditate on the scripture, and spend, and spend your time asking the Lord, hey, re renew that, renew my mind, renew my mind. I'm going to study and meditate on this word. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be transformed. And again, like I told you, Romans 12, 2 says, you are, the, are, you are, renew, you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. The world wants to conform you. Yep. Have you noticed that lately? <laughs> the, little, little, the, the world's trying to conform us? I don't know. Once in a while, I notice something's a little weird. <laughs> Just every, uh, you notice something weird at Walmart? I wonder what it was. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hey, I found that if you keep your chin safe, nobody says anything. Just, I got my chin strap on. Oh, you're good. Keep my chin strap on. Yeah, look, looking good. Thank you for being compliant and keeping us safe. <laughs> okay, but guess what? We get to be transformed 
by the renewing of our mind. Praise God. And sometimes people look at you and say, well, why aren't you more conformed? Because I'm already transformed, okay? I am already transformed. I cannot be conformed, and you cannot conform me. Because there is one king, and there is one Lord, and it's not you, okay? I got one king and Lord, and his name is Jesus. And he has made me king, okay? He has made me a Lord, and I have, praise God, I'm excited. <laughs> I have self-control. <laughs> that means I don't need you to control me, praise God, because I, I have already yielded myself to the King of Kings, okay? So as we live our life down here, <laughs> we are representing glory, okay? It is our responsibility. You know what? Remember responsibility, two words put together to be one. God has made, given you, through Christ Jesus, the ability to respond, you have the ability to respond, okay? As Paul says, we need to stand fast in the liberty that God has given us. We got to stand fast, okay? We, can't be con we cannot be conformed. We have to continue to be transformed. We have to, con and guess what? The awesome, um, amazing, amazing thing. When, when, we, when we're able to answer, who's Jesus? Oh, yeah, I know who Jesus is. Who am I? We, to, you, you start to find out who you are. How do you know these things? You learn them through the word of God. The Word of God teaches you these things. The Word of God ins brings inspiration. It brings transformation, okay? The Word brings transformation. The Word of God, the truth, the supreme truth of, of, of Jesus Christ brings transformation. And the Scripture says in Romans 12, it says, you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean? That means the responsibility is on you. The ability is given to you, and now you get to respond in kind. And there is no limit to the amount of transformation you can experience through the renewing of your mind. Amen. No limit. Good. No limit. I know, yeah. praise God, like when we can shed the spirit of fear, yeah. 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 I'm telling you, I am telling you. Remember when we went through the cycle, the, 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 the freedom cycle, and we went through that, and what is necessary to maintain freedom? Faith. When faith, when faith, in a, when 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 the faith level of a country comes down, fear comes up. Okay. The Lord has put you here for this time in this season for this purpose. Okay. You are people of faith. You need to stand in faith. All right. And if you. <laughs> I love this phrase, defiantly obedient. I actually did a teaching on this. I, should, I think it's either coming out real soon on the Living in Victory. Uh, it's Living in Victory is coming out with a teaching called Defiantly Obedient. Um, what does defiantly obedient look like? That means being obedient to God and his word and willing to defy all others. Because <laughs> that's what he's given you. He's given you the ability to respond in faith. When we can respond in faith... Others see us in faith. When, when, when people see faith demonstrated, they're drawn to it. People can recognize faith from fear, yep. okay? Yep. You might have people that are going to be like, Aah. you know what? For every one of those, there's somebody else looking at you saying, wow, yep. I wish I had that courage. And the courage that you demonstrate as a child of God can only be demonstrated when you know who Jesus is and when you know who you are. Praise yep. God. And we get to stand boldly in the day of judgment yes. without fear yes. because there is no fear in love, okay? There is nothing you can do to me. I'm just going to say, Argh. the worst thing the enemy can do to you is send you to heaven. Ooh, scary, okay? I'm, seriously? And God's... God's <clears throat> called us to live a life of liberty, to live a life of overcoming, yeah. okay? Yeah. Amen. There is no slave or free in Christ Jesus because we've all been set free. Yeah. We're all set free. We need to live that way. Wow. Praise God. Wow. We need to live in the freedom that Christ died for us to have. Yeah. Praise God. That's good. All right, you need to know who he is and you need to know who you are. Should we come up? <clears throat> you know, 
And, and, and seriously, I, I've said this so many times, and I'm going to say it again. <laughs> we, I got to meet Mike Lindell. Praise God. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mike Lindell is one of my heroes. Man, that guy is an evangelist. <laughs> and he, man, he said it. I've said it. So many people have been here and say this. Alex Jones even said it. Praise God. <laughs> We are in the midst of revival right now. Amen. This God. is revival. All right. Doesn't look exactly the way I would have it, but praise God, we're in it, and we need to acknowledge it. Okay? And people need leadership. People need it. People need it. They need leadership. They need examples. That's you. Okay? We've been called to lead by example, okay? Now, we are in the midst of revival. There is a great faith awakening happening in our country right now, like, like never before, okay? Like never before by a unique set of circumstances, we're seeing a great faith awakening. And people need to know that there is one God and one Savior, and His name is Jesus Christ, okay? People, people need to know that, and they need to see that in you. When they can see you with that confidence and boldness, like Scripture says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So when you're as bold as a lion, wow, somebody's that person might be righteous. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's you. That's you. That's you. Let's stand up. All right. So first question, who's Jesus? If you can't today say, not just say, oh, he's God, he's the son of God. If you can't today say, Jesus is my Lord and he is my savior. If you have not already said that, I'm telling you, today is the day you can say that. You can say, Jesus is my Lord and he is my savior. Scripture makes it so clear. All you need to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that the Father has raised him from the dead and you will be born again. You get to receive by faith what Jesus released by grace over 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Lord. If you've never done that, I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. And just repeat after me. Jesus, again on the third day I receive my salvation now thank you Jesus wow. praise God thank you Lord mm. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you I'm telling you this is a kingdom we live in a kingdom the kingdom that Jesus brought, Luke 4, 43, he said, I have come to bring the kingdom, the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of heaven. The good news of the kingdom of heaven is that the kingdom of heaven has come to earth. Amen. And when you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you've entered into the kingdom of heaven. You've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness, and you've been transferred into the kingdom of light. Now, God has made you. He didn't. He, he has made you a light giver. Okay, he has brought you into this army, the army of God, the army of light, to bring transformation to this world that desperately needs it. So now, who are you? Who are you? You are a child of God. Who are you? You, you are a co-heir with Christ. Wow. Jesus made you a co-heir. He said, everything that belongs to the Father is mine, and I'm giving it to you. Wow. You have been given dominion. You have been given a charge to be fruitful in life and to take dominion over things. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We thank you that you give us more than we need. You give us. You define us. You define our being and you give us purpose in life. We thank you that you give us victory. We thank you that you give us confidence and that you give us courage. We thank you that in you we lack nothing. 
And for those of you watching right now, I just want to declare healing and life over you. I want to declare divine purpose and favor over you right now in Jesus' name. When you can answer these questions, who is Jesus and who am I? You can, you can live a life of overcoming. You can live a life of freedom. You can live a life of victory. I speak healing over you right now in Jesus' name. I speak deliverance over you right now in Jesus' name. Welcome to Victory Center Church. Our goal is to ensure that you stay connected with the church and continue growing in your faith from wherever you are. To do this, we provide a variety of resources such as our website at ivictorycenter.org, mobile app for Android and iOS, Roku channel, and Apple TV app. On our website, you can find out more information about our mission and core values. You can also find a brief overview of our current areas of ministry. You can formally join the Victory Center Church family by providing some brief contact information. Additionally, if you would like to be added to our mailing list, you can check the optional checkbox at the bottom. You can view a calendar containing all of our upcoming events on the events page. Additional updates and blog posts can be seen on our news page. If you are unable to visit us in person on a Sunday morning, feel free to watch us online through the live stream page under the media section. The best part of our website is the recordings page, which offers on-demand access to our full catalog of hundreds of videos. All of these videos can also be found in the media tab of our app. Tap on a video and press the download button to continue listening to the word offline. Our app also offers the same access to event updates and the live stream posted on our website. If you are interested in a more immersive experience for watching any of our videos, check out our Roku channel and Apple TV app. Victory Center Church offers a way to give from wherever you are. Here's a quick guide on how to give through our mobile app. First, if you have not already downloaded the Victory Center Church app, you'll need to open the app labeled App Store on iOS or the app labeled Play Store on Android. Tap on the search bar and enter Victory Center Church. Tap the Get button on iOS or the Install button on Android, then return home. You can now tap on the new app icon to open our app. To give, tap on the middle button on the tab bar on the bottom. Tap the zero in the center of the screen and a number pad will slide up for you to enter an amount. After that, you can tap the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount. You can swipe left to reveal more options. Tap the next button and you'll be redirected to your phone's browser to complete the payment. You can choose to continue by signing up with an email or using your pre-existing Facebook account. Enter in all the applicable information and tap sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to the mail app. Tap the email from Subsplash with a subject which reads, Welcome. Then tap the Confirm Email Address button. This will redirect you back to the browser where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, tap Link. You can then finish your gift by tapping the Give button on the bottom of the screen. Giving online at Victory Center has never been easier. Here's a quick tutorial on how to get started. First, open a browser such as Google Chrome or Safari. Type ivictorycenter.org in the search bar and hit enter. You will see the homepage of our website. Next, click the top right tab in the navigation bar labeled Giving. You'll be redirected to a page where you can start filling out your payment information. Start by clicking the zero in the center of the screen and typing your amount. Then select the phone you would like to give to by clicking on the round button with the default title of General. In the drop down, you can choose from a list of our current funds. Then choose the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount by clicking on one of the listed options. More options can be revealed by clicking and dragging left or right. After confirming your information, click Next. You'll be redirected to our payment processing provider's website called Subsplash. You can choose to create an account with an email or pre existing Facebook account. Additionally, if you already have an account, you can click on the user icon in the top right and select the login option. If this is your first time giving, select on one of the two options provided to sign up. Fill in the required information, then click sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to an email provider such as Gmail. Tap the email from Subsplash with the subject which reads welcome. 
Then tap the confirm email address button. This will bring you to a web page which confirms your account. To finish, go back to the tab with the original payment and refresh it. You may need to re-enter your payment info. After doing so, click next. This will direct you to a page where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, click link. You can then finish your GIF by clicking the Give button on the bottom of the screen.